is coming up in a couple weeks, and I'm really excited. I love Halloween, but it can be a problem for people with autism or another sensory processing disorder. I was diagnosed with high-functioning autism at age 2, and I've always celebrated Halloween just like any other kid, but that may not be the case for some people with autism. In this video, I'm going to give you tips on how to make Halloween more sensory friendly for kids with autism, or if you have autism yourself. And I'm going to tell you what has helped me over the years when celebrating Halloween. Let's get into the video. My first tip is to make a costume out of regular clothes. There are so many tutorials on YouTube on how to make homemade Halloween costumes. I suggest doing this because Halloween costumes that you get from Spirit Halloween, Party City, and stores like that are normally made of this cheap, scratchy material which people with autism can feel sensitive to. Store-bought Halloween costumes are not the most comfortable. An example of a homemade costume is, if you want to be a princess for Halloween, you can get a regular dress that's comfortable, you can even use a dress you already have in your closet or something, and you can get a tiara or crown and maybe a princess wand to go with the dress. Or, I think just a regular onesie would make a great Halloween costume if you want to be an animal of some sort for Halloween. And onesies are very comfortable. A lot more comfortable than store-bought Halloween costumes for sure. I know onesies are pajamas, but on Halloween, no one's going to notice. Not only will you be more comfortable, and homemade costumes are a lot more sensory friendly, but you'll save so much money. Despite being cheaply made, Halloween costumes you can get from the store are very overpriced and expensive. So it'll be a lot cheaper to make your own costume. Yes, you'll have to get creative and go through the trouble of crafting your own costume, but it'll be way better than having to deal with a meltdown caused by an uncomfortable store-bought costume. When I was a kid, I always wore a store-bought costume on Halloween because I wanted to fit in with the other kids. But looking back, I was pretty uncomfortable in my costume every year. I always changed back into my regular clothes immediately after trick-or-treating. So yeah, make your own costume and be comfortable on Halloween. Another thing people love to do on Halloween and around Halloween is watch horror movies. If you're autistic or have a child with autism, I recommend choosing movies that are sensory friendly. For example, I wouldn't recommend choosing a horror movie that has a lot of screaming in it. Screaming is definitely an ear-piercing noise for those with autism and it could result in a meltdown. Choose movies that are not too overwhelming or noisy. If there's screaming or other loud noise in a movie, what you can do is turn the volume down when the noise comes on screen. Also, if you're going to see a horror movie in theaters, I highly recommend going to a sensory-friendly showing of the movie, if your movie theater has them. Don't go to a movie where it'll be too noisy or overwhelming. If a movie is very action-packed, it's probably not very sensory friendly. In fact, it can be pretty overstimulating. Action-packed movies have always bothered me because of the loud noise. Honestly, I recommend just watching movies at home so that you can turn the volume down when needed and things like that. Most horror movies are pretty sensory friendly, but watch out for the noisy, overstimulating ones. You want to be able to enjoy horror movies on Halloween not have a meltdown in the middle of them. Another huge part of Halloween is parades. Because people love to dress up on Halloween, there's going to be a lot of costume parades on Halloween. New York City has an annual Halloween parade every year, and if you're in elementary school, your school is most likely going to host a Halloween parade that all the students participate in. Yes, these parades are really fun, but they can get pretty noisy, which is definitely a problem if you're autistic. Not only that, but a parade usually means it's going to be a really big crowd, which can also be a sensory issue. I always participated in my elementary school's Halloween costume parade, just like my classmates, because I wanted to fit in, and my parents always came to watch the parade. Parades have never really been an issue for me, but it may be an issue for other people with autism. If you have a child with autism or sensory issues who's in elementary school, one thing you could do is let his or her school know that he or she has sensory issues 
and ask if they could stay inside during the Halloween parade or something. Maybe if the parade is at the end of the school day, you could pick your child up from school early. If it's absolutely mandatory for your child to participate in their school's Halloween parade, or your child really wants to participate, yes, they'll have to deal with the large crowd, but it might help if you have your child wear noise-canceling headphones during the parade to block out the noise. Either that or just stay away from the parades. And lastly, the highlight of Halloween for most kids is definitely trick-or-treating. Now, trick-or-treating may seem like a sensory-friendly activity, but that's not always the case. Just going trick-or-treating can cause a lot of problems for autistic kids. Like, there might be too many kids outside and they might make a lot of noise. Or your child might not have good enough social skills to trick-or-treat politely. Well, the first thing you should do is practice trick-or-treating with your child at familiar houses, like your neighbors, friends, or relatives' houses. Tell your neighbors, friends, and relatives in advance that your child needs to practice trick-or-treating at their house before Halloween. You can then practice saying trick-or-treat when the person answers the door and then thank you after getting the candy. Get your child used to the process before taking them trick-or-treating for real on Halloween. Also, to avoid all the noise the other kids might make while trick-or-treating, you can again wear noise-canceling headphones while you're trick-or-treating, or you can go earlier in the day, or later, than the other kids. Choose a time where there's not going to be as many kids out. For example, if trick-or-treating normally starts at 5, take your child trick-or-treating at 3 or 4, or take him or her at 8 or 9 after most of the kids have gone home. Don't take them too, too early or late. A few years ago on Halloween, a little girl came to my house at noon, which I thought was way too early. I wasn't even ready to give out candy yet at that time. When I was a kid, my mom always took me trick-or-treating immediately after school, a couple hours earlier than other kids. Yes, I felt embarrassed because I just wanted to fit in with the other kids, but it was definitely a lot quieter when I went earlier. Another option would be to take your child to a neighborhood or area where there aren't going to be many kids. Also, it's a good idea to be around familiar people when trick-or-treating because you're probably going to be trick-or-treating at a lot of unfamiliar houses. For example, when I was little, I always went trick-or-treating with my mom and my siblings, and sometimes my best friend. I was never alone. My last tip is to trick-or-treat at houses that just have a bowl of candy sitting out. That way, you can avoid running into social problems due to having bad social skills. That's all the tips I have for you today. If you have autism or have a child with autism, I highly recommend you follow this advice. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope my advice helps you have a safe and autism-friendly Halloween. I hope you have fun. If you liked this video, please hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. I post new videos every Friday. You may also follow me on Twitter at Alexa underscore Gerard 98 and on Instagram at Alexa underscore Gerard. If you have any questions or requests for upcoming videos, please comment them down below. Also, if you have any tips of your own you'd like to share, please share them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and happy Halloween. Bye guys.